Yeah, it's visible, sir. Okay, good. Very good. Okay, one sec. Okay, so let me before I start, let me see if you have any questions from my from the part one. So if not, let's take. Um, I have the fleece fifty seven slides, so I'll go a little bit quickly. Yes, okay, sir. Part. So, so we saw basically the beauty of information integration. We looked at basically that what are the key technical challenges for integrating the information from diverse sources. These sources could be homogeneous or the heterogeneous. And we also looked at basically that what kind of technologies that can be leveraged to solve some of the information integration problems. <clears throat> In this part, we will look at the two important aspects because as I said, our focus is for integrating structured and the unstructured data. So the first questions that arise that how we can structurify the unstructured information and it is a complex process. Right. So that is basically extracting the entities from the unstructured document and how to measure the accuracy. Right. So that is what we will look for. Right. And various approaches. Once we have extracted the information, structurify that information, kept it in the some kind of relational databases. Now the problem is that given two tables, how we can match these that every record with another record are they matching and if yes then let's integrate it if not then don't integrate it but what should be the criteria for the matching right and that is what we will be discussing various algorithms so the first is the information extraction so given the document that document either we can extract the entities because it has mentions of several entities so for example Bikram C works for NIT Kurchitra right so NIC Kurchitra is an entity Bikram C is an entity works is a relationship between these two entity and it might have an attribute both for example he joined the institute on so in so and so year so that are the attributes basically of that entities or the relationship entities right so how to ex extract that yeah? there could be a you can define a template based one so if given a web page you know the web page basically where the things are located you can define a template uh, and sir, can, okay yeah. sir so i mean is it possible to make it full screen sir this uh, visibility yeah, of yeah. Yeah, the region I'm not using, but I wanted to use the, yes. the you know, the highlighter. The, I mean, okay. High, yeah, that's, yes, that's sir. Right. It's okay, sir. It's okay. Oh, sir. Yes, sir. It's fine. So, extracting the entities from the PDF, Excel, tables, or, or even extracting the tables from the web pages is a really difficult and but very interesting problem and there has been a lot of work in that area right it's like extracting the tables so let's look at one more example so given this document now this document basically has mentions of several entities right and it might have some relationships so first problem here is that how to structurify from unstructured to structured data. Now, somebody needs to tell us that, okay, in this document, we are interested to extract the name of the people, what is their title, and in which organization they are working for. So these are the three entities or attributes that we are interested, the values of these three entities. So you can either, as I said, that we have been given a, let's say, a, a, a name of all the CEOs and the top XCXOs 
in that one so either we can have a dictionary based approach right or we have a dictionary of all organizations we can have a uh, uh, dictionary approach here to spot each of the entities in that dictionary in that document or we can have a rule-based approach or the machine learning approach and we will look at one example of each of them right and that is what so now if you run a query that give me all the people right uh, who are working in the microsoft office a microsoft organization if you run this query right even if you give you know like keyword based queries on this it is very hard to extract all the people working on the microsoft because there's no you know association of organizations and the and the people are men are explicitly mentioned over here right so it's relatively easy to extract the structured information from from this text document and run the queries on this table right and like here you get the answer bill gates and will back there so the question here is how to extract these entities right so these entities first what to extract and how to extract so what to extract somebody needs to define that we are looking to extract persons, organizations, course, product, date of birth, these entities from the underlying document corpus, right? And we are looking certain kind of relationship like teach, CEO, works, and so on, and attributes, right? So here in this talk, we will focus only on extracting the entities, right? Here. Yeah. So what are the types of solutions available so there are two types of solutions one is you define a set of rules right that and these rules could be as simple as that you extract a keyword from the document look up basically in the dictionary if that word is available in that dictionary and let's say that dictionary is name is is the dictionary has the names of all universities or the organizations then you just say nit kurchit is a university or is an organization right so you can draft basically these very simple rules or you can write a regular expressions so for example you are extracting the names and the names is typically has first name and the last name or it can have a middle name also when you write the names, you write the first character is in capital. So you can write that if two conjugative, two or three conjugative words has the starting letter in capital, then it then tag that as a person name. So these are the based on the simple rules. The other is based on the learning. That is <coughs> learning based approach. As you know, there are two ways either supervised or unsupervised. So given a corpus of one, you basically see what kind of entities are there. So you train that data, right? And you, based on the training data set, you apply that on the test set and see the accuracy that you are getting up to the mark, what you are expecting. And then you, once you basically develop that model, then you apply it to the rest of the data, right? And we will see how to measure the accuracy. So one example of regular expression here is, let's say this is a product description, right? In this product descriptions, right, we want to get these three attributes, right? So again, you can have a, a dictionary-based approach or the regular uh, expression-based approach to extract these attributes from this, from this product description, right? But writing these regular expressions is a really, really very, uh, you know, complex task. And it looks very uh, cumbersome. So for example, given a call for proposals, you have a conference for the call for uh, papers, sorry, call for papers, right, in the conference. And if you want to extract the name of the conference from the, from, from the whole uh, call for papers, 
you need to look at you know the title the first one and the second one somewhere it mentioned that the third international conference was held so and so place and so on right so you need to extract all those identify all those mentions of that conference a uh, name in that call for paper so if you write that it is really looks very complex right? the other approach as said dictionary based approach so given a call for papers you have all possible names of the conferences you look at basically take one name from the dictionary and you look in the call for papers or the vice versa there right so that is a dictionary based approach on there but in the dictionary based approach there sometimes like name so as i said vikram kumar singh now in the dictionary it may be vikram singh or it may be v k singh or it could be vikram k singh or it could be v singh right so we need to get all those variants right from the extracted entities so whatever the entities that we get take the all the variants look for all those variants in the dictionary right so this requires some kind of cleaning process and generating the variants on on on, on that entity right the many ambiguities when you extract the data as i said jordan michael jordan we don't know basically say country or the person name similarly like apple right ipad or the apple juice and if you take apple here then you don't know whether say you are looking for the apple as a fruit or apple basically is a apple company name right so how to ex those one right the way to measure the accuracy we measure the accuracy in terms of precision recall right and how does it work basically so let's say you have a two documents d1 and d2 and d1 basically has the mentions of two entities bill gates and steve jobs document 2 has basically mentions of four entities elon musk elon turing satya nadella and san jose our objective is to basically extract all the persons name from these two documents and let's say basically you have written a rule based extractor right and this and you run this rule based extractor on these two documents and extract the entities and then these arrows one that you see the your rule based extractor uh, extracts bill gates steve jobs satya nadella and san noje these are the four entities right and they it tags them as a name right so the so now once you get that answer now you have to measure the quality of your answers that how good is my rule based extractor is right is it a good or bad and if it is a bad then you go and change some of the rules so this is basically you learn from that from that learning you go and feedback basically some uh, things and you change the rules right so from the way to calculate the measure is a major uh, quality in terms of precision and recall so what the precision says precision says that out of all the names that you have extracted how many of them are the correct names right out of all the ones that you have extracted so in this bill gates steve jobs satya nadella and san jose as you can see basically that only three of them are correct so 3 by 4 is the my precision and the call is that that out of these you have extracted versus how many of them correct are there in my database which we have not extracted overall so bill gates steve jobs elon musk elon turing and satya nadella these are the five true named entities persons entities but only my ex, my extractor extracted three of them correctly out of five so the precision is 3 by 5 and therefore basically you can calculate the f1 score right so all the entity extraction right 
we compute the accuracy of the quality of my annotator and the extractors in terms of precision and recall. Okay. So now, how do we do extraction in practice? Right. In practice, we have millions of documents. Like somebody asked in the Google, right? How do we do that? Right. Google does basically Google annotate these documents when we search Apple, and then we exactly get Apple information. And the answer is yes. And how do they do that? Right. So. Assume basically we have a million documents, right? And we need to extract the entities using the dictionary plus regular expression approach, right? So what you do here, first, you need to decide that what is our expectations? Expectations in terms of precision and recall, right? The, that I, we want, 80% entities extracted should be correct or at least 80% of the entities should be extracted from the database right? these are the two different things that whatever the results that we have got out of that how many of them are the true positives right that is what the precision age the recall is basically how many entities are there in the my backend document corpus, right? And how many out of those, how many of them we have extracted in the answers? That is the recall one, right? So you define that how much basically precision recall that we are looking for. The more precision, more recall, that means you are spending more time, more time means more human efforts. Right? Very simple. Now, you should divide this exercise into two parts. One is basically for developing the annotators, right? That extractor or the annotators. So, out of 1 million, you take care of some portion of the data. So, let's say basically you take 2 lakhs of records, uh, documents from this, and you want to write the annotator and test the annotator on these ones. Right. So the development is that development stage is you find a good extractor, right? Uh, e and some using some samples. Either you can take the first initial 200, 200, 2 lakhs, or you can take basically arbitrary. And the whole idea is to basically get the representative sets, right? So that this set basically has seen all kinds of data that we have in the million documents. Right. Once you have developed the good extractor, then you apply good good extractor in the remaining eight lakhs of records, right? And then compute the accuracy. You see the accuracy over here, and you expect basically, and you are happy with the accuracy based on what you have set the target in the beginning. And if you are happy, go and apply over here. If you are not happy here, you go basically change either you change the development. Uh, data stage data set right you change different or you change the your uh, rule set or the extractor uh, algorithm right so as you said the common requirements is that precision must be greater than a some threshold right and the recall should be also as high as possible you want to extract all the true positives from the from those documents right so that ideally you should be able to extract all the 100% names if they are mentioned in the documents. And ideally, you should not have any false positive in your, uh, in your uh, uh, result, right? Right, so that is what is basically the common requirements is. And why the low precision results can be unusable, right? If you have too many false positives, they are of no use, right? And then basically it can throw human efforts right into the increasing the recall. Okay. So once you have done that development stage, you have figured it out, right? That that uh, extractor, you have developed those uh, extractor on the development set uh, and you have applied on the test set also. 
and you are happy with the accuracy, then go and apply on other things. And this is one basically a scenario go over here. So out of let's say 1 million documents over here, you take a sample of some 300 documents, right, which is very, very low. Indeed, you take more than that, right. And then you basically you take that out of 300, you take 200 as a development set, 100 test set and development set means that out of these 200 you will develop the extractor and whatever the extractor you have developed you apply on this test set and see the accuracy or you can have multiple test set here you apply this extractor again on this here you apply on again over here right so you can have a multiple you can take a multiple uh, test set and apply the extractor and see basically you are happy with that accuracy or not if not basically go back and change either the data set or basically you know your representative sets or is not good or basically your rules for for extracting the entities are not good okay so that is what is how do we use the development side use it for create refine extend extractor e and and use it to a rough estimate of accuracy and pinpoint where is the problem in the extractor and then you go and change and and refine that right so in the development side 200 you examine several documents create the extractor apply into the rest of the documents you compute the precision and recall and f1 score and identify basically the false positive and, and negatives right and if you if there are too many basically you go and modify your extractor modifying your extractor means basically changing some of the algorithm right the rules or, or, or making your regular expression changing the regular expression and basically apply e2 again and this process basically goes keep going till basically you get the good result right So now identifying the false positive and negative, as you know, basically if the document is this, you have Steve Jobs, Elon Musk and Senoje, then if you want to do the false negative prediction, basically the, the, that you identify over here and similarly, basically on the extract that Elon Musk is a correct prediction and Senoje is basically your false positive there. And since Steve Jobs was not a part of the extraction, therefore this is a false negative uh, prediction. Right? So in the production, now once you have the extractor ready, you are happy with the precision and recall and the accuracy that you would like to achieve it, you go and apply to the rest of the document and that is what is called the production stage right so remember again summarizing this that given a document corpus you want to write a good annotators take some representative data set look at basically the manually what kind of mentions of these entities in these documents write the regular expressions plus dictionary based approach right to write those regular expressions for that right apply the dictionary plus regular expression and see basically that are you happy with the results or not you because since your document corpus is very sorry the development corpus is very very small you know what are the two positives and what are the false positives and right and the two negatives also right you see why my annotators or extractor is not pulling out the information which it should have done it, right? To increase the recall and, and the procedure, right? Then you see that manually go and change, change uh, your extractor, right? So, and that is what basically you go, you see that, you learn it, you go and change it, learn it, go and change it, right? So it is a little bit of iterative process till basically you are happy with the procedure and recall, right? The set, so this was the, dictionary and the regular expression can we basically do this with learning based ones right and the answer is yes right so if you want to let's say i want to classify a document which is a good bachelor and the bad bachelor is a good student and a bad student right now we classify good student and bad uh, student based on basically 
the number of characteristics which call the features right a features could be basically that he attends that class regularly right answers the questions correctly he did performance wise very good right his background on other prerequisite subjects is very good right so that's on basis of you define bad uh, or brilliant student versus average student right like mangoes right given a basically uh, mangoes you want to classify is it a good mango and the bad mango right you know that what are the qualities of good mango is a smell looks basically yellow there should not be any you know black things or whatever right so these are the features based on that features you go and classify over here the same kind of concept here is that you do the label positive examples and negative examples you create those basically you know the features and then therefore you create the features vectors apply them on the you have a training data which you have labeled it right and the testing data and then you develop a basically model out of this training data based on the features that you have got and then apply that model on the other data and these classifiers could be your decision tree or naivation or any other uh, classifiers right so in the again uh, here this is an example that okay out of the data you have got bunch of data here right bunch of entity and you basically create positive right you label them yes this is a name yes this is a name no this is not a name like a sanoje this is not a name this is a name this is not a name this is not a name there right and then for each then for each of them you create a feature vector that is basically that to feature vector for entity a is that these are the features basically should be there that is why this is positive right and and these are the one that is why it is negative on that and then out of that you select some of them as a training data set you classify them train a classifier get that model apply that model classifier on the test data and then you get the accuracy if you're not happy either you go back change the labels right or you change the classifier right change the condition on the classifier and go go on like that right? this is the basically what i just told you about how to use this in the development side right so now let's move to the entity matching and the entity matching is let me first go here the entity matching is that given two tables so let's say you have a table of of your papers right or or table of m uh, all the clients of bank 1 and then you have another table that also basically the clients of bank 2 and some of these clients may be the common right so bikram singh is a client in hdfc bank bikram singh is also a the client of in the sbi bank right so given these two organization now one organization has acquired another organization so rather than they have a two different client database they would like to basically integrate it and merge it to make it to one database and see is there any common clients between two of them right and if yes let's integrate make merge it and keep it one single record for that right and that is what is the entity matching so given an entity here given an entity over here see entity in this relation is same as entity over here is right so bikram singh in the hdfc bank basically has given name bikram singh in the another bank basically he has given the bikram kumar singh right now we have to see and all other information phone date of birth affiliation phone date of birth affiliation look at basically these two entities are same or not right so that's what the entity matching is so given two relational table x and y with identical schema right that is our assumptions here right you can do basically even the schema is different right assume that each tuple x and y describes an entity like here describes an entity bikram singh bikram kumar singh right 
Now identify whether these two ones are same or not. Right? So like here, David Smith, phone number, Madison, Wisconsin, David M. Smith, this phone number, Madison and, and Wisconsin. Here you see basically that here David Smith or Dave M. Smith, here the area code is not given, the city and the state is same, right? So then if we match these two, it is likely that these two guys are the same, right? And entity matching gives you some certain uh, score, right? So we say that two, we say the tuples X belongs to capital X, and tuple y, they refer to the same real world entities if x and y is called a match. Right? So if Vikram Singh and Vikram Kumar Singh, the phone number, the phone number, the date of birth, the date of birth, the affiliation may be different because this account was created when he was working with Maruti, this account was created when he joined NIT Kurchetra, affiliation may be different, but date of birth maybe phone number may be different right so then it is a match okay and that is what the entity matching and we are going to learn about this problem of entity matching all right so that we can merge these two entities right or we can integrate these two entities right so again the example is that given these two tables x and y as you see basically that x1 and y1 it matches over here because the name is same the phone number leave it the area code phone number is same city and this and dan smith and the daniel smith they are the same one here right so here in our discussion we are assuming the schemas are same but it works basically even if the schemas are uh, different or basically even there is a single table and you want to see is there any duplicates in that table or not, right? And and also the data may not be the listener, right? Why this problem is different than string matching? But then in the string matching, you just look at only one string and apply the added distance algorithm, whether the Levin Einstein or Jaro Winkler or any other algorithms, and you see that, right? Here, basically, since even the name may be the same. For example, Vikram Singh and another table, Vikram Kumar Singh, the name may be the same or even the Vikram Singh in the another one. Can, if the name is same, can we say they are the, these two entities are same? No, because accidentally the, right, uh, the name may be the same and these are the two different people, but having the same name, but their date of birth, their phone number, their affiliation, everything is different, right? And in that way, basically, that data integration or the entity matching problem really becomes very, very interesting. And uh, there are different methods to, to do the entity matching. It could be a deterministic approach or it could be probabilistic approach. And here, we are going to discuss only the deterministic approach, uh, but many database vendors like Initiate, Master Data, uh, I think Store, or no, not MDS, Master Data Systems, they use the probabilistic uh, approach, right? So many of them, they use the probabilistic approach, but we are going to use here, discuss only the deterministic approach. And the deterministic approach as the name suggests basically in, right that based on the attribute matching you decide whether two entities are matching or not you give a different similarity score right you give more weightage to the one attribute so for example if aadhaar number in one table and the aadhaar number in the another table if they do ma if they match the aadhaar number right then they are the same so even if it is aadhaar number one two three four we can see in another aadhaar is number one two three four and name is vikram kumar only vikram kumar right then since aadhaar number and aadhaar number they are the same you can say basically that they match, right? And very likely basically that they are the same uh, people, right? Because, because the Aadhaar number is the same, right? So, so we can take the deterministic approach, right? So 
The first approach is the rule-based method. So in the rule-based method, the developer writes the rules that specify that how two tuples should match, in what way basically they should have the match, right? So the developer specifies those rules. So developer says if the Aadhaan number matches, then they are the same person. Don't match rest of the stuff. Some some another developer can say if Aadhaan number is matching, give 80% score. Then I would like to see the names also, right? And if the names also match with a, within the added distance of some threshold, then give 10% match. And let's give the 10% match to date of birth, right? So they can write, developers can write the rules to specify when two tuples match, right? And there are many types of rules exist. And we will discuss basically all of them, linearly weighted combinations. The, the example just I gave you basically that you give the linear, linearly weight uh, for each of the uh, attribute matching, right? The logistic regression, which basically tells you that even if you increase the score of uh, one of the attribute, it linearly basically will not make much difference, right? Uh, it will diminish the effect of strong matching right so we take basically the logistic regression and this is most of the time basically used in in practice or one can define more complex rules like if and then kind of thing if Aadhaar doesn't match or Aadhaar is varying only the with the last one digit right it may be a typing mistake by the whosoever is basically uh, typing or entering the data, then look at other things, right? If the Aadhaar match, then don't look at anything, right? So you can have a more complex rules like that, right? So linearly weighted combination is a very simple is that you compute the similarity score between the tuple X and Y as a linearly weighted combination of individual similarity score. So tuple X has many fields. Tuple Y has many fields. And remember, they are the same schema. So then you join, you see the similarity score of tuple X field 1, tuple Y field 1. See what is the similarity score. Tuple X field 2, tuple Y, field 2, tuple X, field 3, tuple Y, field 3. Compute the similarity score for each of the attribute match, right? Number 1. Number 2, once you have computed, then manually somebody needs to give the score. Okay, I would, we would like to give 40% weight for the field 1 matching. 20% weight for the field 2 matching, 30% weight for the field 3 matching, 10% weight for the field 4 matching, right? And that is what the alpha is. So alpha is the weight, right, that you would like to assign for the attribute matching in that, right? And you take the summation of that, and of course, the all the alphas should not be more than one, right? So then you take that score and you compute that score, Right, and and then you define your own threshold value that we will accept those matching where let's say the similarity score is more than 0.8, for example. Right, so then you take only those scores with the 0.8, they are all true, and you can say if similarity score is between 0.7 and 0.8 then you send them to the human review. The human basically will see they are matching or not. And based on that, basically, they can adjust the rules, right? The similarity score. And if it is less than 7, 0 0.7, then you completely discard they are not matching, right? So that is what the linearly regression one, right? So this is, for example, is given here, right? So let's say you have a table X and Y. X has name, phone, city, state. Y also has the same schema, right? So now 
you know basically that x1 dave smith you you join one tuple with another tuple over here then you do name with name phone with phone city with city and state with state right and then somebody defines that okay we would like to give 30% weightage to the name similarity 30% to phone similarity 10% to city and 10% or 30% to state right and based on that you can compute the similarity score name and name so you can use basically the jaro winkler which is basically good to to uh, see the similarity for a short text right um right those who have done the in information retrieval things basically they know how to compute the distance or how to see the two strings are matching or not right so you have a different kind of methods jaco denkla levinstein added distance right and and many others and there are many if there are many words are there then you can apply the jacquard uh, rule right distance so then you can compute the distance based on that and you can compute then and then you can say basically okay the overall score for this is more than point 8 then you say that these two records are same else it is not right that is very simple right so the proj is the good uh, part of this linearly weighted algorithm is that it is very simple conceptually it is very simple and easy to Im implement right the interesting part is can we learn these weights so here rather than somebody is defining that we want to give weight to name 30% phone to 30% city to 10 state to 30 can we basically learn this data and the answer is yes you can learn these weights and we will see how we basically do right with the, some classifying uh, supervised algorithm basically we will see basically how we learn these weights okay the 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 disadvantage side as i said basically that in some of the scenarios right it is not desirable to have these you know even if my name gives you let's say 0.9 uh, similarity and even if you basically increase and make it the 0.5 it's not going to make much difference because you al you multiply that with alpha right is not going to this so this is called the diminishing returns and for that basically the logistic regressions uh, formula is being used right and logic regression is basically same thing but it is basically 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to power minus g minus and g is basically is the formula that you learned in the linear regression uh, form right so in most of the case as i said logistic regressions rules are used for the entity matching right and and it is a natural fit basically in many of the those uh, cases right and it is very quite popular method to to try as a, as a first method right? the other is you can make it more complex rules right so as i said basically if the adhan number and adhan number they match then don't match anything if the pen number and the pen number they match don't match anything right or somebody can say even if the adhan number is matching we would like to see basically whether the names names are matching or not if the two if the two names are totally different here is sarata devi and here is manoj kumar and adhan number is same then there is something wrong right so depending on the data the quality of the data and then the domain expert who understands that how to match and what kind of anomalies may uh, uh, appear in the data while integrating the information right that guy can decide basically even if the adhan number is same they would like to check basically the date of birth and the person's name and if the person name is not matching right and the date of birth is not matching then they will reject this and in that way it is different than the join in the relational databases 
In the relational databases, what do you do? You join the two tables based on the sum, you know, natural join based on the like other number matches with this other number, you join those two uh, uh, rec uh, records, right? And in that way, it is different. Here you explicitly define that what will be the game of the rules to, to match the entities, right? So rule-based approach, advantage is easy to start, conceptually relatively easy to understand, right? And implement and also debug. And they run pretty fast also, right? Because every similarity score for the two, two attributes, you have a very well-defined formula. You just run, multiply with the some uh, alpha, right? The weightage that you want to give, and you do that. And you can also encode complex matching knowledge, the one that I just described about the Aadhaan number. If the domain experts know basically that, hey, the Aadhaan number is they are, they are punched by the people, therefore they can make the, diff, uh, uh, they can make the mistake, right? So two entities might have the same Aadhaan number, but the names and date of birth and other information will be totally different, right? So, so in such cases, basically, they can avoid uh, in, in these uh, things, right? Um, the disadvantage is that writing such kind of rule is a very late labor in, intensive. And not only that, you should know basically that domain very, very well, right? So therefore it can take a lot of time to write the good rules, right? And other is very sometimes difficult to set the appropriate weight, that is alpha i what weight that we should give to each of the attribute matching right so the natural language age natural next step is can we learn these weights and the answer is yes you can learn the weights are there and that is what the learning based uh, entity matching okay so learning based entity matching is first let me entity matching again repeat the given and R and S, right? That or the table A and table B that we say that this record matching with this, although the Dave Smith and the David Smith, they are the seems like they are the different people. But if Maddie's, if the state and the and the uh, city name is same, right? And you have a dictionary, some kind of thesaurus or some kind of a dictionary where they say that and and in certain culture where you can say basically that dave smith is same as david smith because in, in many you know in western countries like williams they write bill right uh, for the david they write dave right and dave spelling maybe can be a bit different so they write all the variants of that when with that confidence basically you can say that this row one here and the row one here they are the same because the name is here though it is a variant of that name but the thesaurus basically teaches us that these are the two uh, names but they are the same name okay so how do we do that right how we do the entity matching so that it is a two step process the first step is a block and block is some kind of you cluster records based on the same attribute value so if i if we have let's say uh, you know the the students in our university and we block them the in which degree program they are enrolled in right then you make it a that you just cluster or you fragment that table that okay these are the fourth year student they are the third year student these are second year and this is the first year students and similarly in the end of the table i have that one i block those one fourth year third year second year and first year then what you do rather than matching every tuple from here to in here so it is a if there are n tuples here m tuples here you have a n by m 
then you just basically look at matching from one block to same block on the other side right so the first approach is to block and then within the block you match it right so and so what you say over here so there could be a several block candidates blocking candidates right so for example either you can block on the city here or you can block on the state but you can't block on the name it does not make sense on the name because names are typically unique cities are very finite cities a state is also very finite states right like for example in the student examples we can block them based on either the degree program or we can block them on the on the uh, year of admission right or any other attribute basically where the number of blocks after the blockings becomes very finite very very finite and a small number of that rather than basically we cannot block on the basis of the name yes we can block on the basis of the year of birth right that could be possible right so you do that so this is the my blocking if you do the blocking on the state right so state is state so let's say wi and here is wi and wi so this goes a1 b1 and a1 b2 so a1 b1 a1 b2 similarly the second is california now is there any california no so we cannot basically have any possible match is there any west uh, wisconsin yes wi here so this is a3 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 b1 and a3 b2 so then we just go over here so this gives you basically the possible possible combination of matching on the blocking of state right out of these ones you label them yes this is a true match then you say positive this is a yes this is the answer positive match this is not a positive match right so you label them right this is not a one and this is a positive you label them right and you check over there and you see the accuracy right i'm, I'm assuming basically there is one matching algorithm here right you see the accuracy if you are not happy go back probably you choose not to have a state you block on the city right do the labeling do that and do like that so it is a bit of iterative process to do that right so this is what is go you have block over here so you focus only on block and matching and based on this develop the algorithms right and you develop the algorithm to maximize the accuracy right you maximize the accuracy right now for block you have a number of blockers so here for example you have blocker on state you have a blocker on city so you have blocker one and blocker two you might have a number of different matching algorithms right which one to choose right that depends on what accuracy that you are getting apply first algorithm see what accuracy you are getting apply the second algorithm see what accuracy you are getting and so on right so so this is far from enough for handling the entity matching in practice right so in practice basically it is lot more complicated it is a iterative iterative process as I, as i said uh, earlier right so 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 here then in the practice if you have a two relations that is a million tuples i'll just go over here on the uh, here so if you have a large ones right you block them and then you apply the some matching algorithm and typically you apply the supervised algorithm so again you divide this into two parts development phase and the test and the production phase in the development stage basically you find an algorithm on the training data set that gives you the very good accuracy if it is not good accuracy you go and change the data samples or you change the blocking algorithms or you change the matching algorithms 
so you try basically different kind of uh, uh, things right till you get the good accuracy once you have got the good accuracy that means your model is correct you apply that model in the production stage okay so let's me take this uh, step by steps so you take two samples of records from table a and table b take some samples out of it then you now they may have many blocking attributes so select the best blocking attribute so if you choose x then it gives you the candidate set of cx if you choose by here it, the candidate set is cy right and let's say basically you decide that my candidate set is i'm getting using the blocker x right so you choose the blocker x once you have chosen the blocker x now you know basically using the blocker x what are the combinations of my tuples and out of that basically now you need to match them where we can you can assign the 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 labels of them correct labels right from the training data set so from there here you take the sample out of it and then you label that sample so you, you say yes out of this i'll take this sample yes this is a correct match this is not a correct match this is a correct match so you label that one and now you apply some matcher then you apply some classifier example or some svm algorithm or naive bayes algorithm or whatever the basically one of the classifier and applying the matcher u one algorithm you get 0.89 accuracy but if i take another one matcher v another algorithm that gives basically the even accuracy is better f1 score is 0.93 f1 then we choose the matcher v and when you choose the matcher v then you apply the same model that you have learned over here on this data and it gives you the label data here right and that is your quality check so now whatever the result that you have got that okay this is a correct match this is a correct match these are not the correct match and then you check the quality and if you are happy with the quality great celebrate it and if you are not happy with the quality then you go back you have a several options either you change the sample data that is the training data or you change the blocker rather than x take a y or z right or you change the matching algorithm so you try basically different you know options here and that is why it is a bit of messy and iterative process right and that is what the way it works over there so in the production here in the discovered workflow you have identified the blocker x you have identified the matcher v and now in the production stage take the blocker x for all the data set of a and b apply basically the matcher v and it gives you whether these entities are matching or not okay and typically as you said we have you know millions of millions of uh, ones so for example uh, when you go to the airport like us or any western country or even the foreigners when they come to india right the the immigration officer does the entity checking they look at your identity and match that identity which is given in your passport with the database that they are tracking right and they they basically take your retina uh, image they took a thumb impression they took your passport number they took your name date of birth so the number of attributes basically they match so that people can not fudge if they can fudge one thing they cannot fudge another other things right so they try to basically do the matching right and many times you have seen that false uh, cases like our uh, late uh, uh, ex uh, uh, president right uh, abdul kalam azam basically he was uh, he was basically put on hold in the in the us right because 
it was a long entity matching uh, things, right? With the name basically match with some other the entity that they were tracking, right? So you do basically this when you have a large amount of this, you do the you know uh, entity matching in parallel in like a Hadoop or Spark kind of uh, MR framework. So that basically you can improve the accuracy and you can get the parallelism. Okay. So now the question here is how we can learn these weights. Right. So we can apply the learning based matching algorithms. Right. So I'll just go in this phase again. So we'll apply the learning based matching algorithm, right? Where basically we learn the weight right we, we do the labeling right we are learning a matching model so we start with the training data set so somebody has given the training data set and say x1 and y1 matches and here is the label yes yes they match no they don't match it right so they give this kind of train training data set and then basically if they match they define a set of features quantifying why they are matching right as I said if if you if you have been given the definition of bad mangoes and good mangoes and you know that why they they are bad but they are smelly right not a good smell it's a green from outside there are number of uh, you know black things uh, on the outside and good mangoes what taste basically it smells very nice and taste is also very nice yellow color and so on right now if anyone brings you the mango and ask you can you basically tell us is it a good mango or the bad mango so what you will do you will apply all the features that you have learned that you have applied on the training data set yes it is a good taste right or good smell it looks a yellow it is likely basically that is a good mango Right, so that is what basically define this set of features, quantifying basically the justification for these labels of there. Okay, and then you generate a feature vector out of it. Right, so I'm just going a little bit fast here. So once you generate the features vectors over here for each pair of entity matching, you generate a basically the vector that for these different features. You apply here, and that is why these two pair X and Y basically are matching or not matching, right? So you you apply that model to the vector to predict whether X and Y they are matching or not, right? So just a simple example here is let's say basically you have a two tables, right? This is one table, this is another table, and each of them has three tuples: A1, A2, A3. This has a B1, B2, B3, right? Now it has a four ones names, phone number, city, and and state, right? So the features vector here is that you match the first name with the first name. So let's say the S one is the score or the first uh, feature one with the A one and B one. Similarly, the last name and and other things over here. So you define this here, and then you say in the training, yes, if these features vectors basically quantify that this is a yes match yes that uh, that uh, a1 and b1 are matching right and similarly you do for v1 and v v2 right and you apply basically as you said s1 s2 s3 you can apply different uh, uh, string matching algorithm algorithms okay um, now once you have done that training data set our goal is to learn the rule that says basically that okay uh, you find the weights alpha i right that minimize my uh, squared error right and that squared error means basically that if you have a two dimension you have a let's say if you are given the the height of a person here and and the weight of the person over here you know basically that if the height is this this is the weight and this is the one here and then you can draw the line right you can the different line then you can basically say that if given the height of a person now you go over here and then you can match okay and then correspondingly you can tell that yes this is the weight of that 
right so so predicting those uh, uh, you know uh, given the x and predicting the y over here so given the basically the x and y i want to see whether it's match or not you just look at basically the different features that you basically have applied and generated the model over here and right and that is what basically we want to learn these alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha uh, 3 right and and create a, a simple decision tree so for example over here that you created simple decision tree over here right so now if my any x and y if the new uh, uh, tuples basically comes for the matching i will look at basically each of these ones i will look at the match is that feature is there if it is s1 is greater than 0.8 yes then let's test it s3 is greater than say yes then you say yes they are matching right if x1 and s1 is less than 0.8 score then you say they are not matching you just basically reject that uh, matching right take the next pair and so on okay and you do basically uh, the, uh, like that so the pros and cons over here is that uh, compared to the rule based approach the rule based approach must manually decide a particular feature is useful or not right and it's a labor incentive but in the learning based once you can do automatically examine the large number of, of features right uh, the 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 disadvantage of here is that you need a really good set of training example and many a times training examples right or the labeled data may not be given to you right and this happens most of the time it happens right um, so therefore basically can we if the training data is not available can we use the unsupervised algorithm right and tackle this problem and the answer is yes you can use uh, that right so matching white uh, clustering so it's a very simple algorithm the many many algorithms right so we'll discuss only one of them uh, uh, that is basically is uh, uh, this agglomerative hierarchical clustering so what it says here let me explain this example so what it says basically that okay so you have these number of unique the you have number of tuples in all the relations so put every record in one cluster so initially you have a total number of clusters are equal to the uh, the total number of uh, records in both tables so now you take two records two clusters and see are they similar and how close they are and again apply the same kind of algorithms and if they are very similar then you put them into one cluster and then you when you put them clustered then you define the cluster profile you both can be basically can be represented in a in a canonical canonical form uh, into a and this is called the uh, profile of that cluster now you go basically and see that okay so this is iteration one in the iteration two basically you say okay these two can be merged over here and then you define the some profile of this cluster merged cluster then you say the profile of this cluster after merging and the x3 they are the same so then you put them into one cluster and you keep doing till you get to the desired number of clusters right that you have said that you want to cluster this into five cluster or 10 clusters or three clusters and that right so this is a bottom up approach right you go from individual record individual cluster that has only one record Till basically you keep merging them till the till the you reach to the desired clusters, right? So that is the uh, the uh, the examples of the uh, the cl clustering basically in unsupervised way. So here you see basically you don't need any supervised or labeled data. What only you see basically you just merge two clusters based on the how similar these clusters are. And the similarity of these clusters are determined by 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 computing the similarity of the profiling of that clusters right and in that way you just go and and do that 
so with that i'll just stop here that was my last slide uh, i did basically a little bit fast on this let me see if you have any questions please yeah so sir thank you very much sir so actually we have got just got a query from our participant dr mrityunjay because he is working mm -hmm. on this specific area of uh, data space system like how to uh, design a pay as a you pay as you go uh, data integration so his question is uh, uh, like uh, uh, can you suggest uh, some of the good platform where uh, we can get the uh, data set actually so okay. um, yes so, yeah so there are number of so i'm teaching this subject let me display that one sec if you give me one sec so i'm teaching data integration or uh, information integration and application uh, subject this year right and uh, and um, okay here is the my course data outline so one sec so so the slides that i have taken from anhai's book so um, I, I, so anhai if you go to this site this site basically has very good real data sets so right. they have a restaurant one restaurant two and some of the restaurants are overlapping right so do and do the entity matching they have a publication database from dblp publication database from site seers go and do that they have a you know car manufacturing car one database car two database car three database go in there so this site basically has i'll just cut and paste this one uh, yes yeah in one sec in the chat so and and not only that sorry one sec not only that basically that this site also has many algorithms ready made algorithms that you can apply uh, where is your chat here and uh, most of the slides as i have given in the acknowledgement i have taken from his lecture notes and uh, he and hi elan halavi who is he is known to be the father of the information integration he received a 10 years best paper award in uh, vldb 2000 i believe 6 2006 or 2007 right he got or on and sigma uh, one of them uh, i forgot that right so elan halavi and jackry and and hi they have written a wonderful book on principles of information integration and if you go to their website you will see lot of uh, entity matching and many other ready made libraries of the data integration and the real data sets um, yes. and you can use that in my course basically i have taken i am not taken this database i have, my students are basically creating the database from the patent database patent and publications and the classification and then basically developing their own algorithm and then will compare with the results or the algorithms that are given uh, into the anhai's website right right so, so i would i will i will urge you basically to look at this website yeah so yeah just uh, we have got this question from our participant sandeep metal so a yeah. question like uh, I mean, can you suggest any relevant platform for image classification for fpr I mean, false positive ratio so, yes yeah. sir so so i'm not expert on the image classification by but i think there are plenty of uh, literature on the image uh, database classification i work on mostly on the structured and unstructured and yes image and the videos and those are unstructured data source but i i personally don't work in that image classification and that uh, uh, so i can't really tell you that which are the relevant platform for the image classification um, so i i can't tell this uh, really right sir so i think uh, um, we have done with the questions uh, which is which are posted in the chat box 
if any participant is having uh, some additional additional things to be uh, clarified or discussed we have a time i mean five to six minutes for that so i request participants to raise their uh, audio i mean enable their audio and raise the question if they have so uh, yes yeah, so sir we can wait for a few minutes yeah, and, sure. uh, yeah so it is a privilege uh, to i mean have these kind of details to be discussed during the fdp uh, i mean i was a beginner uh, into this area of data integration and uh, data space maybe two three years back and um, this is the first time i am listening to these details how I mean, uh, data and information can be integrated by using the data um, content actually so i have this presumption that whenever we want to integrate data from different sources you need to work upon the you you need to base on the metadata i mean you have to take metadata then integrate but today's i mean this discussion has opened up a lot of things uh, particularly to me that now by using the values the content of the data information we can perform these things i mean it is it is some kind of eye opener for me yeah so so when i was in ibm uh, yes sir. we did the work for uh, few clients right, and sir. one of the client was the hdfc bank and hdfc bank was a referenceable customer right. um, what basically we did we integrated their email and call management system with their data warehousing right, right? and we we figured it out basically that how many uh, clients um who are basically communicating through emails but they do not have a valid email address in their right so so information extraction plays a very very important role and indeed vital role in integrating the unstructured data with your structured data right. and a uh, couple of my students are working on the questions that uh, mittal ji asked about the image so the problem that we are working on that given a set of images so let's say th there is an image somebody takes the the snapshot of this uh, uh, picture right where where the picture of bikram ji and the picture of akshay kumar ji and uh, and my only the photos and and others are given here right and we are already tagged who is sonali gupta and, and and deepak and sanil and, and so on right? right so now what these these students are doing that they extract this information only the text they don't do the image classification but they say okay here is the sonali here is the deepak here is goswami dubey and this and that right and from this information which is already tagged in the database so take this image give it to the vision apis so we basically let's say we give the picture of bikram ji there and give it and that image api will tell okay this is a male of age between 35 and 45 is there basically i'm not that range precisely basically mm -hmm. between two and three years one right. basically the asian uh, ethnicity right it will tell a black hair and so on it gives basically gives you the different attributes so we take that probabilistic record because there is a it is not a deterministic one it is a probabilistic record and use that probabilistic record match that probabilistic record with my other database so let's say database you have basically of all the attendees of the fdp in the last 10 years right and now we match that and then we come up with a title of that picture right so the example that we have taken the students have collected the the images from the hollywood and bollywood bollywood movies when they go they celebrate they're launching their film they are some product their number of faces right somebody is tagged they say akshay this is a sarok this is ami this is this and that and then from there is basically say then we say hey this seems like basically all the people they are basically from the bollywood area and then look at on the banner if something is written there right and tag that information and come up with a with a title uh, of that right and this is again a very interesting application identifying or discovering the title of the image with the help of the structured data right so it's a, it's a integration so 
the number of applications basically you can think of right of integrating structured and unstructured data and this is the future the ai and ml all are being used basically for understanding the unstructured information in the context of other information mm -hmm. so so basically it is like common uh, now we are targeting a data so we, in a, one of the slide in the morning session you have uh, pointed out like uh, data finds data something like that so we will yeah. be having one side we will having set of data which will be helping you to establish this i mean it is kind of verification like uh, so that's right. one exactly. part yes. for example if i extracted out vikram singh yes, from sir. this image from this image and take your image, give it to the Google Vision API or IBM Alchemy APIs or anyone, right? And say that gives you that it is a male gender. It gives a age, some range of that age. Now I know the range. I know the male. I know already become seeing it is a tag there, right? right? Now I can go in the database and look at, give me all the tuples where the name is become seeing, matching become seeing. It is a male because that is male is male. Right? right and the age between this and this so then it will basically i can find it out who is Vikram Singh, where does he work and so on and so forth right right so there may be another Vikram Singh whose age is there is 65 definitely it is not matching right, right? so then we can pinpoint that basically who's the who's Vikram Singh in that database from that image right so more or less actually um, we have addressed other questions raised by the participant as well as i mean i feel that we have i mean significantly covered or touched upon this possible aspect of information retrieval or information information search so sir uh, thank you for this privilege details uh, and um, discussion i mean and again because uh, we are having different time zones in india here and uh, where you are having in australia so it is always challenging to meet this difference between uh, time zones. So thank you for uh, making this possible. Uh, and uh, we will be connecting uh, with you, sir, for the right. future events also, because uh, I mean, maybe in the after two months, we are planning to have a similar kind of FDP uh, relating to knowledge extraction. So there also we will have this possibility of um, information integration uh, and this kind of thing. So for that also, we will be uh, connecting to you, sir. Uh, and uh, we wish uh, good health to you, sir, because in this COVID time, it is important. And thank you. Uh, thank, right. you thank, me, thank you. Thank you, uh, Vikramji, for inviting me. It was really great participants to interact with you. Um, yes. So great to see you again. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. So thank you, participants. So now we are closing this session at uh, this point. And we 